Hello everyone. Today I'll be talking about EMG classification using waveform length variants or simply the waveform length phases. My name is Rami Kushaba and today's topic is basically initiated after a question I got um, after posting the last video about rockets and mini rockets. The question was, are we at a stage yet or a state to abandon the traditional EMG feature extraction methods, given all the advancements that we are nowadays seeing with deep learning models, with sp like specifically like CNN, LSTM, or even rocket or mini rocket? Should we abandon the traditional EMG feature extraction methods? The simple answer, or the short answer from my own perspectives, I would say no, we are not there yet because we haven't seen that wow factor, like we haven't seen a significant difference on the performance, like you didn't achieve something that we can't get with simple tweaks, basically. And the other reason for my, like the choice of no, is that um, when you implement anything in a real-time implementation platform, you will be much happier to include a traditional method with very light computational cost requirements than let's say invoking something like CNN with so many different layers and gigs of memory requirements into a real time, let's say, platform. So computation requirements and accuracy, this is what I'm focused on. Specifically, what I will do, I will take one of the very traditional um, features from the literature, which is the waveform length that I chose over here. And by the way, what I'm showing you here, the GIF, is that's simply the waveform length. If you have a wave, stretch it out, that's your waveform length, basically. I'm going to compare the performance of this waveform length versus mini rocket that I've recently demonstrated in the, one of my previous videos. So let's start. So waveform length has been utilized in EMG pattern recognition since a long time. I remember reading about it since the days of Hudgens paper in 1993. It was titled like a new strategy on multifunction myelectric control. So it provides a measure of waveform complexity in each segment and is simply denoted as the cumulative length of the waveform over a time segment. So the equation of the waveform length is usually given in this format, which is the summation of the absolute value of the difference between the consecutive samples. Theoretically, or the concept behind waveform length is that if you have a signal or a time series or whatever you want to call it, hold the two ends of that signal, stretch it out and flatten it, compute the length. That's it. That's the whole idea, which proves to be very effective. So let's understand more about it. Now, the limitations of the waveform length feature, just like almost any other traditional EMG feature extraction feature method, is um, basically um, included or categorized into two main categories. So while we understand that the waveform length feature is really good because it gives a measure of waveform amplitude, frequency, and duration, the limitations apply to WL just like it applies to other feature extraction methods. So in this example, we show you an armband, the Mayo armband with eight EMG um, channels. And we are going to show you two signals extracted from this armband. The first limitation that apply over here is related to the lack of spatial focus. So what we mean over here is that we typically use a sliding window approach on each of these signals, extract the features, and move forward, push the windows forward and keep extracting and moving forward. We do not relate, typically we do not relate the waveform length or whatever feature you extracted from this window to the feature extracted from the red window or from the orange signal. And by that you have a lack of spatial focus. Now, in terms of the human anatomy, these muscles, they work synergistically like together. The activation of these muscles like, what I'm trying to say is that there is a synergistic relationship between the activation patterns of these muscles. You cannot simply ignore, or you can, you get some performance, but it's not the optimal performance. And by that, we say there is a lack of special focus because 
You extract the WL of individual channels without relating to how the WL of each channel relate to that of the other channels. Now the other problem is related to the lack of temporal focus. So again, we extract the features from the current window with the solid line and move forward, but we never relate that to the previous window with the dashed line. Now some of you might say there is an overlap, so we do know that how they relate to each other. Correct, when it's the first or whatever number of windows to guarantee an overlap. But what if I'm relate, like interested to see the relationship between the temporal activity of the current window and previous 10th window, which is independent and or non-overlap with your current window. So we don't have an idea about the long-term temporal dependency. We might have an idea about the very, very short, um, let's say, temporal dependency not even the, let's say, decent short, but very, very short. So we still lack the temporal focus. Now, deep neural networks, they are like they work very well in these kind of problems because models like CNN, they capture the special relationships and models like LSTM, they capture the temporal focus and models like CNN plus LSTM or TCN can capture both of them to some extent. So that's the beauty of deep neural networks. However, the computational requirements are so heavy, and that's why we typically say, okay, can we modify the traditional methods because they are lightweight computationally? Can we adopt some concepts from the deep learning methods and apply them on the traditional methods to make them more accurate? So to move forward, what I'm going to show you here are three variations of waveform length. The idea is that I just want to see if I can tweak a traditional method and get a performance that is decent and comparable to something like Rocket or Mini Rocket, because that will determine or will answer the question, help me answer the question, should we abandon the traditional methods or not yet? The first variation we call here scenario one is um, developed by simply considering the previous example this one, an armband with eight EMG channels on the human forearm. So electrodes or channels, whatever you want to call them. All what we say over here, you can relate the activity of each of these electrodes or channel to the other activities by simply dividing by the total sum of the waveform length of all channels. So just like before, the equation stays the same. If you want to extract the waveform length of channel I, we just coded this with the index of superscript i, and the remaining is the same equation. At the denominator, you put another summation, which is going from i to the total number of channels. So you're dividing the waveform length of this electrode by the waveform length of all of them, summation of all of them. So in this way, you're trying to provide some sort of idea about the synergistic relationship somehow, very naive implementation, let's say. Now, if you want to understand more about how could something like this perform across amputees and intact limb subjects, you might want to refer to this paper, which is titled Differences in EMG Feature Space Between Able-Bodied and Amputee Subjects for My Electric Control. Over there, we studied the differences um, between the performances of the features when you test them on amputees and when you test them on intact limb and talk about how the performance might change because of the morphology changes after an amputation. So read that paper to get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now, let's move to scenario two, which is slightly better approach or better tweaking of the waveform length feature. Again, eight EMG electrodes on a human forearm. The paper is um, acquired from Biomedical Signal Processing and Control Journal was I think published in 2020, yes, it's 2020 over here. But they, what the authors did over there, they presented a nice, very nice idea of phaser representation of EMG feature extraction. So basically what they do, they bring the concept of phases. If you remember the days of Fourier transform and um, these like the imaginary and real axes and the angles over there, so basically, uh, what the authors suggested is that to bring or adopt that implementation to look at the, let's say, a way to do position encoding. So for the first electrode over here, we start from the zero, um, let's say, x, uh, axis or the zero angle, sorry. 
So it will be e to the zero, which is one. So you don't multiply this by anything, or you just multiply by one. Second electrode activity will multiply by e to the j pi over four, which is the angle over here. e to the j pi over two for electrode three, because the angle here is 90. And then you continue across or clock counterclockwise, basically, and you develop the phases. So what the authors did, they assumed a signal called x made of n samples. They extract the root mean square and the waveform length feature from each of the signals. They extracted the activity of the eight channels. They call it R0 to R7 for the root mean square values and waveform length 0 to waveform length 7 for the waveform length values. They multiply each by the corresponding phaser component to position encoding, to implement position encoding, basically. After that, they implement a special difference by just subtracting each of the channels from all the remaining channels. So one minus two, one minus three, one minus four, and so on for all of the channel combinations for each of the features. The last feature set they extract is basically the logarithmic version of the difference in root mean square values and the difference in the waveform length values then they repeat the process on the difference or derivative of EMG signals and then take the ratio between them as another feature component. So now we have two scenarios. The first was kind of simple and naive by just dividing by the total sum. The second, which is this one, the waveform length phaser, which is more appropriate in terms of the theoretical contribution, let's say, where they have position encoding and they have special differencing. Now, if you want to do another one, again, let's extract the waveform length from the original electrodes, phaser encoded, repeat the same for the on the derivative of the EMG signals, phaser encoded, the feature extracted uh, eventually will be the logarithm of the waveform length normalized, and the waveform length normalized divided by the waveform length normalized from the derivative. So over here, the difference between this and the EMG phase and scenario two is that there is no special differencing. Okay. Now let's head to Python. Let's have a look at the implementation of these methods. Now, the good thing for us is that the WL, the traditional waveform length, and the EMG, um, let's say root mean square phaser and the waveform length phaser, they are all implemented for you in the libEMG toolbox. So thanks to the guy at UMB, they have implemented the huge set of traditional feature EMG feature extraction methods, as well as some like deep learning developments like CNN. Go over there and do some tests and yourself and have a look at the performance. So I'm going to take you now to the Python um, section and then come back over here to review the results after we implement the code. See you soon. Now that we have switched to the Python side, let's do some testing in Python. So I went and installed a, the libemg toolbox in a virtual environment. Or what you need to do is pip install libemg, as you can see over there. And then from the documentation side, I went to the feature extraction side. Then there's the feature performance with the Developers of libemg have done a very nice testing on a 3DC dataset where they've employed a significant number of handcrafted uh, feature extraction methods and tested their classification accuracy across 22 subjects. And this is the average with the standard deviation. The code is over there, so you can copy the code from here and bring it to Python. And that's exactly what I've done. When you run the code, it will download the 3DC dataset for you and then you can just follow the code and see what's happening. Basically, it just loop through the subjects and test every single one of the individual features in the feature list. So if I go to the um, feature list, you can see that they have a huge list of features, which for the purpose of this test, I don't need it. I'll comment this. I'll only pick few, including WL phaser, RMS phaser, and I need the original WL waveform length, and I will add two more. Let's call the first one WLN normalized, the way we have spoke about in, on, in the slides, and WLN normalized for the original and the derivative. 
So I need to add two new functions and the rest of it is all documented. So if I go search for that function, so this is the original function that extract the waveform length feature. As you can see, all what's happening over here is sum of apps of diff of the windows. Now the window size is the number of repetitions or number of windows. How many windows did you extract? Times the number of channels channels times the window size or will be samples basically per each window so now that we have this um, we know what's going on I will need to replicate this function so let's create another one because I need the waveform length normalized version so I will add n over here and what I'm going to do all what I'm going to do because we said we just need to divide the individual waveform length over the individual channels by the total sum. So I need to add another mp.sum. It will be across x's equal 1 because we're saying we need to sum across the channels. So if that's 0, 1, 2, so across 1. And what I put over here is what I copied above, which is the first part. Go to the end of it and just add a reshape minus one and one and that should be it so this is the normalized version I will need another version of this for the um, function that also looks at the derivative so WLND and by the way if you want to type something here like extract waveform length or let's say normalized just make it nice looking and waveform length normalized. The derivative. W L N D. So over here we said we are actually extracting the waveform length for the original EMG signals, and we need to do the same for the derivative of the EMG signals. So we know the signals are here. So what we're going to do is say data equal mp.diff of this windows across x is equal to because that's where the samples are. So I'm going to take the derivative across that dimension. I'm going to repeat this function. Okay, let's call it um, feature 2. Okay, data instead of windows. And you should be covered up until now. Now the remaining, the phaser component, I need to get it from the WL phaser function. So what you can see over here is that they are building the phaser component, which I'm copying as it is. Getting back to my WLND function, pasting it at the beginning of it. Okay, so that's the feature. So let's just put a separator over here just to understand what's going on okay so that's where we build the phaser this is where we extract the features organize this a bit okay sorry and now what I need to do is go back to the get WL phaser function and the only thing left is this part I'm not going to look at the special relationships bring this back so instead of this I'll replace it with feet feet and b2 and then take the ratios as shown over here and then look at them that should be it and now I can remove this and add a comment maybe here whatever you want to do extract the wl and wl d signals just add whatever note you want over there okay that should be it so this code theoretically should be ready with no errors so we need to run it at least once to see so we should get five features WL WL normalized WL normalized with a derivative and RMS phaser and WS phaser so if I go back to the batch Batch function, 
let's see things should be ready now to run remove this and run this there might be an error actually because i forgot to add a comma over here so let's close this add a comma because we forgot to add a comma over there and then make sure everything is all right yeah should be fine now run it again so there you go the first run went nice so wl wln and the d version so the original gives you 81 on the subject one the normalized gave you 86 not bad the normalized by looking at the derivative as well gave you 90 rms phase i gave you 90 wl phase i gave you 88 mini rocket gave you 91 so i've collected these results already for you let's just compare so 81 86 90 then 90 then 88 then 91 so i have these results let's go back to the slides because i don't want you like we don't want to keep you waiting over here for the results let's go back and talk about the results over there see you soon so now let's review the results so comparing the traditional waveform length versus the waveform length normalized as you can see over here on the 3dc data set made of 22 subjects and i report the average over here at the last point over here or last um, columns set of columns so if you have a look over here waveform length the original implementation is blue and the orange is the waveform length normalized this is simply by dividing that by the sum of the waveform length of all the channels now what do you see over here significant enhancements in terms of the classification results on every single subject from the 3dc data set in fact, if you look at these cases, you will be surprised how something as simple as dividing by the total summation of the waveform length from all the channels gave us enhancements of more than 10% on average accuracy. So across all the classes, I mean. So this is really something interesting. I'm not sure if the pattern will repeat on so many other data sets. I, I tried a couple other data sets, but I like I taste big proper tests need to be done basically on way larger set of data, especially from MPTs to see how would this translate. Now, again, this is waveform length versus waveform length normalized. So you can see, for example, over here, as I said, um, the normalized version gave you something like 75 while the unnormalized was sitting around 61 or 62. Let's move ahead. Let's review now the three of them original waveform length, waveform length normalized, and the waveform length normalized from the original and the derivative. Now you can see that the gray version, which is the third one, is actually even doing better than both of the original and the normalized version. So while that one was giving me 75 versus 60 something, this one jumped even higher into like 81 or 82, which is not bad at all with this simple modification. So this version didn't even consider the synergy between the EMG channels or the special differences. It simply extracted the waveform length phases from the original and from the derivative and used that as features. Now, let's move ahead further and review the other results. So overall, on average, across 22 subjects, Traditional waveform length gave us something around 74 point something or seven. Yeah, it's not even 75, 74 point something. The normalized version jumped to 83 overall across all the subjects. The normalized version with the derivatives jumped to 87. The root mean square phaser as implemented in libEMG as represented in the original paper. Again, 87, just like this version. The waveform length phaser, as implemented from the original papers in the libEMG toolbox, again, 87. Mini rocket using 500 kernels, almost um, the same value over here, which is sitting 
like 87 point something slightly above but no significant differences when you run proper statistical analysis and i've tested mini rocket uh, like rocket mini rocket and mini rocket multivariate this is the best result i got using um 500 um, kernels and i've also tested it using 10,000 kernels so i didn't get anything statistically significantly better with 10,000 kernels so i stick to the 500 kernels now on this data set i don't mean that mini rocket will be behaving in the same way across all the data sets you still need to do your own comparisons but the point over here that i want to raise is how we simply took something traditional something very old tweaked it in a very naive way and then tweaked it in a slightly proper way by using emg phases okay and if you look at the RM rms phaser and waveform length phaser there's tiny enhancement over there which you can't see because they also added the special component to it so because this data set is made of only like eight channels maybe if you try rms phases on bigger data sets with more channels you will see much better values. I've tested it on so many other data sets. On some data, with MPTs specifically, I do get these features to perform really well. So yes, there is an, like a benefit from using these sort of features. Now in comparison to Mini Rocket, go ahead and do some more experiments on your own data and observe the results. Do you think we are yet at a stage to abandon the traditional, especially if we tweak the traditional with some simple and light modifications to make them much more powerful and performance that competes with the state of the art. I still go in favor of the modified or hybrid traditional instead of simple traditional. So enjoy doing more research, watch the video that I've made previously on rocket versus mini rocket if you don't know what this is about the last column and take it from there i would also suggest to be honest if you are modifying the waveform length or any additional traditional emg feature extraction method to also look at the um, temporal focus or the temporal evolution of the emg signals so instead of looking at the differences between the emg signals across all the windows look also at a way to relate that to the previous window so in our papers we did that in one of our papers called ftdd method you might want to multiply the activity of the current window by the previous window the previous window could be any of the previous nth window one two three whatever and explore the difference on enhancements and classification results i don't want to ruin it give you the result from now but yeah you can do it yourself and have a look at the outcomes. Enjoy your research and thank you.